1961 1969 six years time 1969 at the young age of 20 he entered to defend the flag the flag with three red stripes pierced across a radiant sea of yellow he fought he battled to protect the family that yearned for his return six years time 1975 he was captured imprisoned re-educated to challenge the unwavering loyalty of his country. Six years time, 1981, he was released. Freed, yet unfree, to go back to what was once home to only see that home destroyed. To find his wife gone, only to reunite with his daughter and his mother who waited nearby day after day with no guarantee if it was death or life that would greet them next. Six years time, 1987, he met my mom. Birth, creation, to build a new home. Yet home couldn't feel like home when the haunting reminders of his fallen country pervaded his thoughts, eyes opened and eyes closed. Six years time, 1993, he was blessed with an opportunity. Fear, uncertainty, to escape the place of familiarity, to set foot toward the unknown. Six years time, six years time, Six years time, six years time. 2017, he still hasn't forgotten to wear the ring that reminds him of resilience, migration. Though his painful memories live like it was yesterday, he is graced with peace knowing his sacrifice will forever be ingrained in his children. I can still feel the joy and hope I had when I picked this passport at the US Embassy in Nepal. The passport, which was finally stamped with the United States visa after going through two years of rigorous immigration process and also an expensive DNA test. During my interview process, I vividly recall the white man behind the window at the embassy saying I didn't have enough evidence to prove that my father was my biological father because we didn't have any pictures together. How would we though? He had left me when I was nine months old and I haven't seen him for almost 17 years. When my father immigrated to the States, he overstayed his visa and remained undocumented for 15 years. And why wouldn't he? He had two children to feed back home, a sick mother to take care of, and a retired father to look after. The interviewer required me to send blood sample to the United States for testing. Finally, when the DNA matched, I was granted visa to see my father. I was excited, but also nervous, because I didn't know my father anymore. He didn't get the privilege to watch his nine months old daughter grow into teenager, almost an adult. When I first arrived at the Salt Lake International Airport with this passport, I saw my father waiting outside to receive me. I looked at my passport and said to myself, here I am, finally. And my father's first sentence was, you're not little anymore. The passport for me is a reminder that it took me 17 years and my father to reunite together as a family. It also is a symbol of my father's strength. Most importantly, this passport for me is an object that resembles the bitter reality of immigration, prices one has to pay and sacrifices one has to make throughout their lifetime to take care of their family no matter where they are. Hello, my name is Dr. Annie Isabel Fukushima and I'm the director for the Initiative for Transformative Social Work. I'm here to invite you to the Objects of Resilience exhibit here in the College of Social Work. In the College of Social Work, uh, we have an exhibit of photos and their stories and the photos of objects. Uh, we were deeply inspired by Sarah Med, who talks about how objects orient us in a certain way um, towards something. And so we wanted to know what direction we were being oriented towards regarding the objects that tell a story of migration. So we invite you to visit our display here in the College of Social Work.